please open your missalettes to page six, and together we'll pray the entrance antiphon for August the 4th. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O oh Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created, and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, What that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instruction or not. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. 
Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come the glorious deeds of the Lord and his strength and the wonders that he brought. He commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. Man ate the bread of angels. Food he sent them in abundance, and he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? 
He answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. What are you hungry for? Are you ever um, sitting at home, maybe a few hours before bedtime, maybe you're reading, maybe you're watching TV, and you get hungry. You go to the refrigerator. You don't know what you're hungry for but you're hungry. Now studies suggest that you're hungry because you saw a food ad on TV. But what are you hungry for? Think of these people following Jesus. They had just been fed by the miracle. Five loaves and two fish feeds a multitude. There's more left over than when they started. Twelve baskets. They had been physically hungry and had been filled and satisfied, but only for a while. They needed more. They chased after Jesus and his disciples. And Jesus tells them that they are following him not because they recognized the miracle he had performed, but because they were still hungry. But hungry for what? Jesus tells them, work for food that is eternal. And they don't get it. They ask how to do this kind of work. And believing is the work they must do. They have to believe in Jesus. But they want a sign. They missed the sign that Jesus, that they had seen that Jesus had just done for them in the multiplication of the loaves. And they want another miracle now. Jesus will not work another miracle for them, though. Perhaps he is thinking, what's the point? They'll miss it anyway. So they know the miracle of the manna. How God fed the Israelites in the desert while wandering 40 years and became his people. That manna that rained down that they gathered every day. Except the Sabbath, they grab twice as much on, on the day before the Sabbath. But they, these, these people that are following Jesus, they knew the sign of the manna. They knew that God would feed them. They just haven't put it together now, what's going on with Jesus. They are hungry, but for what? They don't know. I should say that it's not something that they're hungry for, it's someone that they're hungry for. The Heavenly Father will provide the food they want. That is what Jesus assures them. And they want it. Give it to us always, is their response. And Jesus tells them, I am the bread of life. 
Never hunger or thirst if you come to me. It's a great deal, don't you think? Never have to be hungry or thirsty again? Sounds great. Believe in Jesus? That's all the work they have to do? Well, we'll find out that this believing is not, they, they will find out that it's not, this believing is not that easy to do. For now, Jesus has their interest, though. He's kind of hooked them like a catchy tune that we can't get out of our head. He's got them. And watch where he takes them. You know, I spend a lot of time, as you know, as you listen to my homilies, preaching about the Eucharist, and I usually conclude with something about the Eucharist in each of my homilies when it seems appropriate, which is most of the time. Um, this thing that I do, this preaching, we hear readings and we hear preaching, it is never meant to stand on its own. It's never meant to be just its own thing. It's to make us hungry. Maybe it's to make us know what we're hungry for. We come here, we want to be fed, and perhaps we don't even know what that is that we're hungering for. It's an invitation for us again and again to renew that commitment with the Lord to accept Jesus in the bread that becomes his body for us. We come again and again and again and each time we'll be deepened in our relationship with the Lord and you'll hear more about this again in this progressive revelation over the next several weeks as we go through the Gospel of John chapter 6. I hope some of you took me up on my offer to read John chapter 6. If you haven't yet, when you get home, open up your Bible. Have a look at it. It's, it's 69 verses. It's not that long. Uh, it, um, but a good preparation for the weeks to come a good way to help us identify the hunger that we have, what draws us again and again to the celebration of the Mass, why we come here again and again and again, and let Jesus satisfy that hunger. The deepest longing we have in our soul, he wants to satisfy. Come and get to work on believing Jesus. Please stand for our symbol of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
we turn to the God of righteousness and truth with our heartfelt prayer. For the Holy Father and all who serve the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For nations striving to find the lost and feed the hungry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all who seek wisdom of the Lord's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For first responders and caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For love, tolerance, and understanding in our community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For peace in Ukraine and in the Holy Land and in all areas of the world, and that nations of the world will respond generously to the needs of those who are suffering because of war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We offer the Mass today in memory of Nancy Mack. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, God of holiness, you lovingly renew our minds and spirits. We seek your mercy as we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. The second collection this weekend is for the St. Joan of Arc Mortgage and Building Fund. Thank you for your continued generosity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 God of hosts, and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy, his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joan of Arc and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts. And in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. There will be no adoration and no noon Mass on Wednesday, August 7th, and no noon Mass on Thursday, August 8th. I'm attending a uh, workshop uh, for priests in Hickory next week. The second collection for next weekend will benefit ABCCM and St. Vincent de Paul. On Wednesday, August 8th, uh, the Knights of Columbus, along with Catholic Charities and Mana Food Bank, will be distributing food items in the parking lot from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in English will take place Friday, August 9th at uh, 7 p.m. Beginning next weekend, August 10th and 11th, the Knights of Columbus will be collecting school supplies. There will be a box in the narthex for your donations. There is need for volunteers in all ministries and committees of our church. Please see the bulletin for more details. And Katie Ryder, please come up and tell us about our finances. Our 2023-2024 budget year ended on June 30th, and it was a good year for our parish. Our expenses ex increased by 13%, but our offertory exceeded those expenses by $3,400. The mortgage building fund collection plus year-end donations provided $73,133 for projects above the $50,364 we need for our mortgage payments. This is such a blessing to our parish to help maintain and update our facility. We used the additional funds for multiple projects. We extended the pavement by the kitchen. We added a culvert, filled the large drainage ditch and other ditches, and hydro-seeded these areas. We cut trees by the rectory, fence line, and columbarium. We sealed and stripped our parking lot we purchased and installed a metal storage building to be used for lawn equipment and for decorations and special items for holy days. Our largest project was adding a handicap parking area adjacent to the columbarium. There are six handicap and two regular parking spots. A sidewalk from this parking area to the columbarium will be completed later this year. A special thank you to our Buildings and Grounds volunteers for assisting with and overseeing these numerous projects. We met our 2023 DSA and priest retirement goals. We have collected 75% of our 2024 DSA goal and about 70% of the anticipated goal for priest retirement. Please see the bulletin for amounts needed to make our goals. In today's bulletin, you will find the report to parishioners and what it costs to run our church, a recap of our 2024-2025 budget. Thank you for your generosity to our parish. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.